Mr. Jones. I'm going to try to be real quick, Mr. Moderator, and help pass this budget. So therefore, I move to amend the uh, bottom line number by reducing it by $19,044. I have an amendment written out at the table, which I believe you have, Mr. Moderator. So let me just stop you. $19,044? Correct. To reduce. Do you have a second? Somewhere out there I have a second. There we go. Mr. Zanoy has seconded Mr. Jones' his amendment to reduce the bottom line of the budget by $19,044. So I'm going to have, it's the operating budget, to um, reduce by 19000 And Christine is going to do the math. But while she's doing the math, if you would speak to your amendment. Why? The math is on that paper. Okay. The uh, $19,044 represents uh, the 2020 dues for New Hampshire Municipal Association, so NHMA. A few years ago, David Lang was in here and made the same motion, and this body over overwhelmingly voted in favor for it, to stop paying dues to NHMA. I quote David Lang, they don't represent us. But I've come to learn it's even worse than that since then. Unfortunately, even though this body passed that motion overwhelmingly of David Lang's, it didn't take effect because the proposed budget wasn't passed that year. But this year, we have an excellent chance that the proposed budget will pass, given that it's lower than the default, right? So this year, we can actually make this body's decision from a few years ago actually take effect by voting yes on this. David Lang's argument a few years ago was essentially that uh, he, he focused in on uh, NHMA as uh, advocating that we not uh, have uh, uh, elected town clerks in the state of New Hampshire, but rather appoint them. That was his main bugaboo a few years ago. And while I agree with that, I think there's a larger issue to be, to be concerned with here. We need to keep in mind that I have we have on camera the executive director of the New Hampshire Municipal Association acknowledging that they are, in fact, lobbyists for the selectmen. So we are using taxpayer money to fund a lobbyist for, our, for a subset of our elected officials. I mean, doesn't that sound absurd on its face? Compulsory, it is, because it's taxation, right? I discovered it was far worse because in 2018, June 2018, just uh, some 18 or months ago or so, the Supreme Court in, uh, issued a ruling, as the U.S. Supreme Court, in Janus versus AFSCME, <clears throat> which the uh, case was basically about whether or not there can be compulsory union dues by public employee unions. The argument was that public employee unions are inherently political. They lobby, et cetera. Supreme Court ruled that to have it compulsory is a violation of individual rights, specifically a right to free speech. Why should a person, such as you, have to pay money for someone to lobby on issues that you oppose and they're lobbying for and you're paying for them? That makes no sense at all and the Supreme Court has in fact ruled that way again, as I say in Janice versus Ask Me, you can look it up yourself. Public unions cannot collect company dues, uh, uh, compulsory dues, because it inherently violates the right of individuals who do not wish to support okay, the Jones, political ad advocacy of Mr. the union. Jones, I want, I want I'm, to I'm going to wrap no, it up no. to this point. Well, all right, wrap up. Okay. Wrap up. So the uh, compulsory dues for political activities is, is not acceptable. Paying an HMA dues through taxation is, in fact, compulsory in nature, isn't it? I don't believe for one second, and I don't think you do either, that NHMA should get any more special treatment than the union. If unions cannot collect compulsory dues, why should NHMA have that special right? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So we're on the Jones Amendment, but I want to go to the select board for the opportunity if they want to comment upon what does the town of Hampton receive for participating or for being a member in the Municipal Association. 
Ms. Barnes? Yeah, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to speak to uh, Mr. Jones' amendment. Uh, the New Hampshire Municipal Association, the way I view it, is a tool to the Board of Selectmen. You elect the Board of Selectmen. Who you elect is who you elect to represent you. So the term lobby for the Board of Selectmen, that might be true. I, I'm not really going to argue that. But I've attended for the past two or three years. I've gone with the town manager, several department heads, the town council, and attended the annual conference that the New Hampshire Municipal Association hosts. And I find it very interesting. And a lot of information is gained. You get to meet a lot of the different vendors that municipalities use. I believe, Mr. Town Manager, correct me if I'm wrong, that every single municipality is a member of the NHMA except for one? All of them now. All the members now? And also, I wanted to inform you, if you didn't watch the Board of Selectmen meeting, I have a very close relationship with the new executive director now. She's just recently taken over, and I will be joining the legislative committee of the NHMA this year, where you review their legislation, what they're going to take a stand on, what they're going to take a stand against. So I think that it is a good tool. Maybe we haven't used it as efficiently as we could be using it, but that is something that I think that the town of Hampton should not disregard. It is a tool for us to use. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Mr. Woodall? Yes, I'll agree with uh, Selectman Barnes. And I, I think if it is a lobbying group, it's a lobbying group for the towns and the municipalities. It keeps us in touch with it. It takes what the towns think they need, go to the state legislator, go to the Senate with it. You know, so it's, it's working for the towns. It's keeping the towns informed also of what's going on in the, uh, in the state government. So I'm very positive on NHMA. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Edgar, would you like to be heard on the Jones Amendment? Yes, sir. Yes, please, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, yeah, my name is Mike Edgar, 70 Anne's Terrace. Uh, I want to speak against this, uh, this motion. Um, this is an example of uh, what the, uh, the group uh, puts out. The, the uh, New Hampshire Missile Association has this legislative bulletin. It's very informative. It helps us uh, keep track of stuff. You can imagine the amount of uh, bills and other things that are going on uh, at the state. It summarizes it. Um, I haven't always agreed with their recommendations, but it is great to, uh, to have them. Um, and I really strongly urge people to, uh, to not take away this, this valuable source of information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgar. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the Jones Amendment? Ms. Wolsey? Mr. Moderator, I move to delete from the operating no, no. book. No, no, we're on the Jones Amendment. So oh, I'm sorry, on the Jones on Amendment. The Jones Amendment. Oh, okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Moderator, Matt Newton, 11 Ashbrook Drive. Um, I'd like to speak on the Jones Amendment. Uh, just a curiosity question. So we're reducing the overall budget, but I believe that the municipal dues are a line item. How can that, how can by reducing the overall budget, because I believe, and it was proven when we had layoffs a number of years ago, that it's a bottom line budget. You can take money from wherever. How can you mandate that that money is taken from the municipal dues. Can that's, speak to that's, that? that's my understanding as well, Mr. Newton, and I'll uh, recognize the town attorney, but I understand if you adjust the bottom line budget figure that the selectmen still have the prerogative to spend the money as um, they see uh, best to meet the needs of the town. Uh, certainly with the Jones Amendment being targeted to a particular item, if it passes, that certainly sends a message as to at least how some people feel about that, um, about that topic. But uh, Attorney Gerald? Yes, unless uh, you're talking zeroing out a specific line at, at, at DRA mandates for the budget organization, uh, I believe you're correct. And so that's not a separate line. So the, the practical effect, if this amendment were to pass, would be to reduce the overall operating budget figure by the amount Mr. Jones had requested. I think it would send a message to the select board as to how the people here today feel about the topic, but I believe the selectmen still have the flexibility, the, the legal ability, if they decide to renew the dues at the New Hampshire Municipal Association for the next year, they can write that check, is my understanding of it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Don't get me wrong, I am certainly not a fan of the Municipal Association, having worked closely with Dave Lang in getting the money back to the towns that he did, I applaud him for that. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't see the um, the purpose of doing this because it, all it does is send a message. But we've heard from the selectmen stating that what their intention would obviously be to stick with the municipal association. Where I applaud Mr. Uh, Jones's uh, idea. I don't think it's going to work. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Before I go to Mr. Jones, uh, as a second time per our rules, anybody want to be heard for the first time on the Jones Amendment? If not, back to Mr. Jones. This amendment is not, nor do I, offer any criticism of NHMA. They do put out some fine products. I, I may agree with them 60% of the time, and thus I'm only funding them to oppose me 40% of the time. Gee. That's really great. Yeah. Could be 80 percent, and I'm only funding them 20 percent of the time. I don't agree with them. This is not a criticism of NHMA. And as far as their advice is concerned, you can get their advice right online. You don't have to be a member to get that advice. You can go right online or read it. There's no membership requirement at all to get that advice. You may not be able to call them on the phone and ask them questions, but it seems to me that very little of that activity takes place. And when it does, it's not too often it's actually adopted as their first recommendation is actually followed, if you know what I mean. I can't get into details. It's not the forum for that. But I could speak for an hour on this topic. So it's not a criticism of NHMA at all. It's simply saying that people shouldn't be forced to pay other people to speak on matters they don't agree with. It's simply unconstitutional, according to the Supreme Court, as I read the decision on Ask Me. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the Jones Amendment before we take a vote? Seeing none, we are going to take a vote on the Jones Amendment. So before you do anything, if you raise your voter card on the yes, you are reducing the budget by $19,044. That's the effect of a yes vote. A no vote would leave the original budget figure intact. So. On the Jones Amendment, all those in favor of reducing the bottom line of the budget by $19,044, please raise your voter card. Down cards. All opposed. Down cards. I declare that the Jones Amendment has failed.